U.S. military bases in Iraq, Syria and other places can be hit by Russian drones. There are offers. The United States literally covered the entire planet with its military installations. There are about 900 of them. It should be noted that in countries such as Syria and Iraq, Americans are hated by radical groups. In EU countries, the attitude towards Americans is better, but active ill-wishers still number in the millions. Therefore, Russia can channel the ebullient enthusiasm of US enemies by providing them with useful tools. Russian media says that, in fact, Moscow is ready to respond to America for Washington's permission for Kyiv to fire American weapons deep into Russian territory. It is noted that the United States itself regularly and consciously takes steps aimed at increasing escalation. They are supplying the Ukraine with increasingly deadly weapons systems. Therefore, if the Yemeni Houthis, Syrian and Iraqi Arabs or some activists in Germany or Africa get thousands of cheap FPV drones or some other weapons that fall on the heads of American troops at their bases, then don't be surprised by this in Washington. The United States simply will not be able to present anything serious to the Russian Federation and they will be afraid to start a nuclear war, so they will have to endure it or negotiate. US bases are a very serious opportunity for power projection, but at the same time an incredible vulnerability given modern technological realities and combat experience. The Americans will get tired of strengthening air defense, missile defense, no Patriot air defense systems and other means will be enough, and even the US Federal Reserve System may go bankrupt on ammunition. Russian media says that in addition, the Russian Federation may well begin to support national liberation movements not only in Africa but also in Europe. Prospects look great in Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales, Catalonia, Basque Country, Corsica, Bavaria, Tyrol, Silesia, Flanders and other oppressed regions. The US's European allies simply need to be made sad for their Russophobia. Whether the Kremlin will agree to this or not is another question. Russia threatens Africans to force them into war against Ukraine. Russia is threatening migrants and foreign students with deportation if they do not agree to go to war against Ukraine, reports Bloomberg. According to officials familiar with the situation, using a tactic first employed by the Wagner Group, Russian officials have increasingly begun threatening not to renew visas for African students and young workers unless they agree to join the army. Moscow is also recruiting convicts from its prisons as some Africans with work visas in Russia have been detained and forced to decide between deportation or fighting. One anonymous official told the media that Russia's practice of sending migrants and students into combat under pressure dates back to the beginning of the war. These troops are suffering particularly high casualty rates as they are increasingly deployed in risky offensive maneuvers to protect more trained units. Africans are not the first foreigners used by the Kremlin to conduct military operations in Ukraine. Russians tried to recruit Serbs and Ukrainians living in the occupied territories. Before that, the National Resistance Center reported that Russia had recruited tens of thousands of mercenaries from Africa and Asia for the war in Ukraine. Russians were also bringing mercenaries from Cuba and Nepal to the occupied territory. However, mercenaries from Nepal began to desert the Russian army. In its African strategy, the Kremlin is motivated foremost by a desire to thwart US policy objectives, almost irrespective of their substance. Considering Africa one of Russia's foreign policy priorities, Russian President Vladimir Putin also seeks to create African dependencies on Moscow's military assets and access African resources targeting countries that have fragile governments but are often rich in important raw materials such as oil, gold, diamonds, uranium and manganese. Russian private security companies such as the Wagner Group purport to redress complex local military and terrorism conflicts with which African governments have struggled. They also offer to these governments the ability to conduct counterinsurgency and counterterrorism operations unconstrained by human rights responsibilities, unlike the United States allowing African governments to be as brutish in their military efforts as they like. In turn, Russia seeks payment in concessions for natural resources, substantial commercial contracts or access to strategic locations such as airbases or ports.